One of the most significant enhancements to Stack Graphics 18 is the ability to handle big data. This video describes methods for creating big data files that can be used in Stack Graphics 18. A new file format with the extension .sgb has been developed for working with big data. There's no firm rule for what defines big data, but we tend to think of it as files with more than 100,000 cases. SGB files store data in binary format rather than text format. This avoids constantly converting text to numbers. The files also store data column by column rather than row by row. This reduces the time required to read data into memory dramatically, which is important given stack graphics structure around data variables. SGB files are created by importing text files created by other programs. Either delimited files or text files with fixed column widths may be input. File conversion may be time consuming, but the important thing is that it only needs to be done once. After an SGB file is created, big data can be read very, very quickly. Processing time reductions with SGB files are dramatic compared to row by row text files. The example I'm going to be looking at in these big data videos has to do with flight arrival and departure delays of commercial flights within the United States. The data is available online from the American Statistical Association. It was used at the joint statistical meetings in 2009 for something called a data expo. Data is available on a year-by-year -year basis. For example, the data in the year 2008 contained slightly over 7 million records. The data for 2007 was closer to 7.5 million. If you combine the data between the years 1991 and 2008, you get over 100 million records. The first thing you need to do in Stack Graphics 18 to work with big data is convert the text file into a Stack Graphics big data SGB file. I'll do that by going to File, Big Data, Create Big Data SGB file. Here you see the text files I've downloaded with the flight information for each year. I'm going to select the data for 2008 and press open, which will display this dialog box. At the top of the dialog box, you'll see the first five lines of the file we'd like to convert. We need to look at that in order to specify some information about the file structure. First off, I need to indicate to the program what the file type is. Well, if you notice, you'll see that every entry in every row is separated by a comma. It's a comma delimited file. So I'll set the radio button here to other delimiter and indicate that the comma is the delimiter being used. I also need to indicate to the program what type of header is at the top of my file. In this case, I have field names. In other cases, I may have no header, or I might have two lines, one with a field name and one with a field description. I also need to indicate to the program if any global missing value indicator is contained in the file. And if you notice, at the end of some of these rows, you see that NA is being used to indicate not available. This is in addition, incidentally, to empty fields. You see some empty fields up here, 
which also indicates no data. The next thing I need to do is indicate to the program information about each field that I want to read. I can do that in a couple different ways. If I want to, I can change the number of fields manually and input values giving field names, field types, field widths, missing value indicators for a particular column, and a description of each of the fields. If you happen to have information at the beginning of the file, it's easier though to just go down and push the extract button. This will read a certain number of rows. In fact, the number of rows indicated up in this field called extraction rows. It will figure out by reading the first hundred rows in this case what the name of each field is, what type it is, integer, numeric, character, and so forth, what width the field is, the maximum width of each field in this case, and also what the missing value indicator is. Another way to input information about the fields is to create a stat graphics data file with the information and read it into this dialog box. To do that, let me go back to the stat graphics data sheet and let me tell it to open a stat graphics data file. And I happen to have one called 2008 flight data fields. This information is often provided by those who put together the original big data text files. I'll now go to file big data create big data SGB file. I'll pick the 2008 flight data. When the dialog box opens I'll go to the bottom and push the button labeled input. This lets me take columns of my data sheet and indicate what column contains the field names, which column contains the field types, the widths, the missing value indicators, and the field descriptions. When I press OK, the dialog box will be populated by that information. I've got a couple more fields to set. I'll need to set again the field type to comma delimited. Tell it that the file header has field names because it's not going to want to treat the first row as data. Tell it that the global missing value indicator is NA. And now also specify the maximum number of rows I'll let it read. I'm going to set that to 100 million, which is enough to cover the rows in this particular file. When I'm all set, I'll press create and it will start the file creation process. Converting a big data text file to a stack graphics big data file does take some time. In this case, it took about five minutes to convert the file. The good news is though that the conversion process has to be done only once. Data from the stack graphics SGB file can now be read very quickly when you want to analyze the data. Let's close this dialog box now. And I'm done with this. And press File New to empty the stack graphics data sheet. In order to read the file I just created, I'll go to File open open data source. You'll see at the bottom of the open data source dialog box a selection for stack graphics big data files. Now you'll see that a big data file has been created with the same name as the original text file. I'll select that press open and it will be read into the stack graphics data sheet. You'll notice that the data sheet is in read-only mode. You can scroll through it if you like and look at the data, 
but if you want to modify columns, you'll need to use a procedure I talk about in another video.